Chapter 45 to 46, the next target. Dreams Come True was one of the most popular pubs on the island. It was known for its delicious food. It also served strong and tasty alcohol. Pride, who must have been wearing some sort of lucky medallion, made it into one of the most prestigious halls on his first try. Everyone's eyes turned to the front door. Some have felt intimidated by Pride, others not so much. After all, there were all kinds of people in the tavern, whether they were pirates or civilians, or maybe even off-duty Marines. People tried to avoid conflict as much as possible on this island. It was about relaxing, to just kind of shut down for a while. There were a lot of empty seats at the bar in front of the bartender. One of the strongest liquors and a large portion of meat, said Pride, taking a seat in front. Right away. It may take a moment. Please be patient. No worries. I'll wait. A few minutes went by. Pride waited patiently for his meal to arrive. Of course, he could still do his hunting and eat in the wild. But the best source of information was in these kinds of establishments. His observations hockey picked up on all the conversations going on around him. As best he could, he tried to filter out the most important ones. After all, he was gone for just over three years. Although he watched One Piece and knew a lot, he lives in a completely different time. In a time where he has little information and where almost nothing is mentioned in the anime. Huh. Pride made a sharp turn to the right. He overheard a few people at a table talking about the pirates of today and about the forces in general. Pride then rose from his seat. Bartender, you can bring the food to me over there. I'll keep them company, pointing right with his index finger. Haha, the woman really said that? Dude, that must have broken your heart. Don't even ask Dash. Before he had a chance to finish the sentence, he and his three colleagues noticed that a complete stranger had pulled up a chair and sat down next to them. HM, is there anything we can do to help? One of the people asked skeptically. First of all, I am sorry for the intrusion. But as I was walking by, I overheard you talking about some pirates and their stories. But that was a few minutes ago. Another added. Pride couldn't help but sigh. At first, I didn't want to disturb you. But I guess my curiosity got the better of me. Would you mind telling me? The four civilians took a look at each other. Then they turned to look at Pride. He was tall and looked very strong. Especially because of the sword he was carrying with him. The question was more. Was there any way to say no? It rather seemed like one had no choice and had to start all over again. Haha. <laughs> Why didn't you say so before? A light bead of sweat dripped from his forehead. He became nervous as Pride looked at him intently. So where do I start? Everything began over two and a half years ago. Mayhem spread. Pirates wreaked havoc everywhere, spreading fear and terror. The Roger pirates were the ones most to blame for this. That's exactly what Pride had heard before. And that piqued his interest. Tell me more about the Roger pirates. Sigh. They are everywhere. Even though they are one of the strongest crews in the New World, they are not just active in the new world. Before you know it, they'll be showing up in South Blue. And they're not the only ones. Other strong pirate crews are showing up, and not just in the new world. Then he told some of the stories he had heard from those who had visited or read in the newspapers. That the Roger pirates had encountered Vice Admiral Garp and Vice Admiral Sengoku several times. But they never got caught. They always escaped in time. And that one of the admirals is probably looking for a pirate. But he has not found him yet. He also learned more about the other major pirate crews. The Akuma Pirates and the Sphinx Pirates, considered to be one of the largest, have been at war for a long time. They have been fighting over territory that they both want to control. Then he told Pride about the Roger Pirates' new bounties. What, what was that? Can you repeat it? Um, all of it? He said nervously. No, no, just the last part. Can you say that again? Pride said in surprise. Oh yeah, sure. And Pride, there are 300 million belly for his head. What the heck? How is that possible? I wasn't on Roger's ship for long. Well, Garp and Sengoku, or even other Marines must have seen me before. But how in the hell did they get to know my name? Or did Roger just spill the beans in one of the confrontations that followed? All right. Thank you very much. Do you know why there's a bounty on his head? That's self-explanatory, isn't it? He was seen with the Roger pirates. I'm sure someone who hangs out with such a dangerous crew must be dangerous and crazy himself. I hope the Marine catches that son of a bitch. Sigh. You might want to take a look at the current wanted posters on the wall over there. It's not just the Paradise ones. The New World ones are there, too. Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you, Pride said and stood up. He glanced to the side. Then he looked at the wall. Even from a distance, he could see the wanted posters that were hanging there. He became curious. I wonder, what do the new bounties look like? Many wanted posters hung on the wall. From left to right, many lines down. Pride started from the left. He skipped over the low bounties. In the beginning, the Pirates of Paradise were the most prominent ones. Somewhere in the middle of it all, he came across his wanted poster. Dead or alive, Pride 300.000.000. How is that even possible? 
the picture of his wanted poster. Pride was clearly in the picture there, with his whole body on display. I never saw anyone take a picture. Besides, Morgans was only six years old at that time. So how the hell did they manage to take the photo? And in such a good resolution at that, too. Sigh. At least now I don't look like I do on the wanted poster. The power of a beard. After him, the bigger pirates began to appear. Most of Roger's crew and others above 400M were visible. Eventually, he stopped at Gabon and the others. He began to smile. Dead or alive Scopper Gabon 1.000.000.000.000. Dead or alive Silvers Rayleigh 1.600.000.000. Dead or alive Joel D. Roger 2.000.000.000. In the past, their bounties were already at a very high level. That's why the increase has been so small over the years, I think. Oh. Dead or alive Shinwa D. Heman 2.599. 0.000.000 Dead or alive Ishin Ekuma 2.649.000.000 Very high indeed. I'm sure there are other bounties that are similar to this, but they're not up here. I mean Zebex doesn't hang there either. A sinister atmosphere spread. Pride, who had previously jumped from the middle level bounties to the highest level bounties, now had a look at the other bounties that were very high. He was in a rage. He totally lost control. Boom. His overwhelming conqueror's hockey spread out completely and was beyond control. Instantly, all the people in the tavern became unconscious. Whatever was left in the tavern was either destroyed or left permanently damaged. Even the walls began to crack. The people who had been in the pub were gone. There was no one left in his or her place. Everyone was thrown unconscious through the air. They landed somewhere in the area. But in his fit of rage, Pride had forgotten to hold back his hockey. And so it happened. Not only the people around him lost consciousness. Oh no! At that very moment, almost all of the people on the island were lying around somewhere, unconscious. The tremendous energy was felt by some of those who were still very much conscious. Somewhere on the island. What a terrifying conqueror's hockey. Who was that? Sigh. I just wanted to have my peace. Why was it that one of the Tenorubito wanted to go on a vacation here, of all places? And why the hell was I sent here? Now not only do I have to babysit him, but I also need to deal with the problem. And so a stranger made his way to pride. Unfortunately, it was too late for Pride to realize that he was letting his hockey flow out uncontrollably. In the next moment, he reined it in, so much that it was completely gone. Looking around, he noticed that everything in the tavern was in disarray. Tables and chairs were broken somewhere, and people were lying in corners. Sigh. This was not supposed to happen. But for a moment, I lost my composure. He picked up something from the ground. A wanted poster. Dead or alive Draco 1.400.000.000. Son of a bitch. It won't be much longer. You are going to be my next target. I am going to make you suffer. That is my promise to you. Pride crumpled Draco's wanted poster and tossed it into a corner. Then he walked out of the pub. Actually, I had intended to stay here for a while longer. But now I have lost the desire to do so. Huh. Pride was surprised. In his anger, he forgot to focus on his observations hockey. He did not notice that some of the island dwellers were still conscious. One of them even approached him. Not too far away. Someone moved forward in a blur. Unknown POV. Was that Roger or Akuma? That conqueror's hockey was similar to theirs. Or was it that pirate again? The one Midori told us about? That Zebek, who was nowhere to be found. Hmm. Should I evacuate the Tenryubito first? Although no. That piece of shit can wait. I can't stand there babbling for now. It did not take him long at all. The stranger had arrived at his destination. With one of the Rokushiki techniques, the Soru, it was easy for him to move at breakneck speed. Now there were two people facing each other. It seemed that the person was waiting for his arrival. Huh. Who the hell is that? It's definitely not one of the Roger Pirates or the Akuma Pirates. And by his appearance, it's not Zebek either. But someone with such a strong conqueror's hockey would have to be very well known, right? Who are you? Your appearance tells me nothing. But you are powerful. I can feel it. POV end. Pride saw no point in escaping. He waited until the person arrived. He could sense that this person had a tremendous amount of power but he had no intention of fleeing. He had too much self-respect for that. Had he trained so hard all these years for naught, just to flee when perhaps someone stronger appeared? No. He felt it. There was a chance. They were roughly on the same level, even if there was a small difference. When the person appeared in front of him, they looked at each other for a moment. Pride was asked a question, but he did not answer because he was in some kind of trance. My good fortune, of course. I'm starting to feel like I've been cursed or something. Hell, I'm on a resort island. Why the hell am I meeting someone with the strength of an admiral? Hey, it's rude not to answer when asked. 
This time, Pride's attention was focused on the person. He was a huge man, nearly 3 meters 50 tall. He had a very muscular body and a very broad stature. He was wearing brown boots and a pair of black pants. Over the pants, he was wearing a white t-shirt. On the shirt was the marine insignia. On top of that, he was wearing a white navy coat. He had a very distinctive, charismatic face. A white navy cap covered his medium-long purple hair. Zephyr, Pride murmured, Oh, you seem to know me quite well, and you also don't look like a civilian. That only makes you more dangerous in my eyes, Zephyr said with a serious attitude. Zephyr can already be considered as one of the strongest beings. For many years, I have been training hard. A fight against him would definitely be a great experience. And he should be 32 years old by now. His nickname Black Arm hasn't been given to him yet. He will get it in the next few years. Is it so important for you to know my name? Asked Pride. F-H-H. But of course, your face is foreign to me. And I guess you don't want to tell me either since you're a wanted pirate. Ha ha H. My name is Pride. But enough talking. If you want to fight, let's do it. That's when his eyes began to shine with a reddish hue. It was as if a storm was about to sweep across the island. An eerie black aura spread in the distance. It caused cracks to appear in the buildings. The sky, which until recently had been filled with brilliant sunshine, was now covered with a dark veil. Only flashes of black lightning rained down. Pride focused on Zephyr and nobody else. Not that it would have made any difference, as most of the inhabitants were unconscious anyway. Zephyr, who was used to such conqueror's hockey, was not bothered by it. It was as if his legs were firmly planted in the ground. He only shifted by a few millimeters. Faha H, excellent. Pride, 300 million belly bounty. Pretty low bounty for such a strong guy, eh? Size. He is an admiral candidate for a reason, and one of the closest to Garp Hockey Wise. Zephyr's eyes did not waver. His gaze was one of seriousness. How about if we go a little further into the forest? At least then there will be no harm to innocent people. Pride knew it was a resort island, and that there were many civilians on this island. He didn't hesitate with his response. Perhaps he was a cold-blooded killer, but he did not want to see innocent people suffer. Whatever. Zephyr grinned. Then follow me. Soru. Boom. The ground literally crumbled beneath him as he moved at an incredible pace. Pride also blasted out with terrific velocity and trailed after him. A few minutes later, they were several kilometers away. Far and wide, there was not a soul to be seen or felt. Well, it's far enough. We may begin. Pride was now face to face with Zephyr. Just 100 meters separated them. The latter didn't hesitate to act. As he lunged forward, the vice admiral's right arm glowed black. Pride did the same thing. With these words, two black fists clashed. A tremendous amount of energy was released. The island was shaken to its very core. A second collision followed, pushing Pride several meters back. Your armament hockey is impressive, but it's not enough. Zephyr said, charging forward. Pride grinned at that. Both of his arms glowed black as they made contact with Pride. Asterisk boom asterisk asterisk boom asterisk asterisk boom asterisk. Punch after punch, they released shock wave after shock wave as they kept advancing. Though Pride was falling behind in each clash, it wasn't enough to make much of a difference. The two men soared through the air. They were in one place out of sight, in another place back in sight. Boom. Another blast shakes the surroundings. The two men descend to the ground with a 60 meter distance between them. Both were completely uninjured. Pride grinned and burst into laughter. H-H-H-A. I think that's enough of a warm-up.